Hey, after a six month break from YouTube, I'm back and I wanted to share news of a cool new creative AI tool called StoryGrid, which allows you to create a series of consistent images from a single generation that you could then use for previs, storyboarding, and of course, video generation. Um, so I'm going to explore that in a minute. The reason for the extended break from YouTube is because I've now taken on a role as head of creative AI for a company called Cinema, and I've also continued to develop AIanimation.com. Anyway, for this video, let's take a look at StoryGrid. Here we go. Okay, so if you head over to AIanimation.com, you can press start creating and register or log in, and you're presented with the dashboard, which gives you an overview of your credits, your current subscription, and you can see we have tools for image generation, video generation, upscaling, rotating cameras, there's a full 3D model generation and a 3D canvas where you can arrange lights and models to create a scene that you can then restyle with AI. And you can go up to the top and you can browse the various image models, see the tools here, various video models, including those with audio. And there's the creative network where there's a directory of creatives, there's a community where you can post content and you can create your profile and portfolio. Nice. But the bit we're interested in is story grid. So let's take a look at this. Okay, and now on the story grid page, you can see the various grid generations I've done in the past, testing out the tool. And we can click any of these and press reuse. And then in the sidebar, you can see the settings used for that grid generation and the reference images used. We can choose any of these and click into that grid and you can see the various individual images and we can click on those to see a full screen image and cycle through. Press back to grid. We can move below any of these images and press upscale, edit or video and that will open up another part of the website. Um, and you can spin down and see the reference images here as well. So hopefully you can see how this would already enable you to create some good consistency between your generations and build up various images that you can then use for storyboarding or to take into video generation or edit to refine the image before turning it into a video. In the next section, I'm gonna run through and create a brand new grid, run through the various settings in the sidebar, talk about the shot intent drop down, creating the perfect prompts and how you can customize the settings for your different references and things like that. And before we do that, we want to create our own character reference and an environment reference. So I'm gonna to go to the image section and we can press create image here, or we can choose one of the text to image or image to image models here. I'm gonna choose, uh, let's go for Flux Pro. And this loads up our image generation, video generation gallery section here, where we have our unified generator here, where we can do an awful lot of things from a nice, simple UI. But first of all, I'm gonna press the button up here to the left of the gallery button and create a brand new project, Tortoise and the Hare create projects and we have a brand new folder here which we can click and we have a clean space to start saving out our new image generations which we'll use for our grid references. So moving down here I can click on the text prompt area that's clear my last prompt and write out tortoise um, and I've got some different presets here let's go for papercraft and that adds a quick extra prompt a whimsical papercraft scene with layered cutout textures let's change scene to character let's make the tortoise a ninja and I've got a Ninja Tortoise, a whimsical papercraft character with layered cutout textures on black background, a wide full body shot. And I'm gonna, let's do four generations and I'm gonna keep it at 16 by nine. And that's being saved in our Tortoise and the Hair folder. And let's press generate. If we want to, we can just click here and try out the different image generation models. Some of these do require an image reference. So if I chose Flux Context Pro, for example, you'll see we can then drop in references, which will then be used in that image generation but let's stick with Flux Pro for now. So whilst it does that tortoise, let's generate our hair. So I'm just gonna change prompt to a hair and keep the rest of the prompt the same. And again, just press generate. And we can click on any of these and cycle through. I actually rather like this guy here, not that keen on the rest of them. So I'm gonna try a slightly different prompt for that hair. Let's get rid of that papercraft bit of the prompt and try a different presets. So I've now got a hair, a handmade claymation style character with soft textures and sculpted details on black background, a wide full body shot. And again, let's try those. And we have these image generations. Pretty cool. I quite like this guy here. Um, and we just need an environment. And I'm going for 80s New York City street, a handmade claymation style scene with soft textures and sculpted details. And again, press generate. And we end up with these four images. Very cool. I like this one a lot. Nice. I could obviously spend much more time refining this, creating just the right images, but I'm happy with this just to try out the grid sections. So with that done, we're gonna move up to the image button, choose story grid. And then once back here, we can move over to the side panel and I'm just gonna do a two by two grid for this one. 
For the image aspect ratio, I'm going to choose 9 by 16. And then we have shot intent and auto is kind of general and cinematic and quite often might be the best result. But you can also change for dialogue if you've got two characters and you want a back and forth scene, over the shoulder shots, things like that. Um, for this one, I'm probably going to go for action, but you can also do coverage, which will give you wide, medium and close up shots. Mood, which will give more of a silhouette, nice wide shots, which can be useful for establishing shots. And there's a character study which will give different camera angles of your character reference and your scene. I'm going to go with action and move down to the reference images section. Click that and it opens up this pop up. And we're going to choose our hair, the tortoise that I liked. And for the environment, I'm going to go for this one here. And we could leave this as is, or you can actually go through and change the little toggle here from auto and select whether the reference is a character, an environment, or an asset. So this one is a character and the one down here is an environment. And that simply helps the image model have more to go on when generating the images. It's not essential, but it can help. And for the text prompt, I'm going to write the hair and click the number one here. And that just adds a bit of text, image A1. In a race with a tortoise, click number two. In a claymation New York street scene, image A3. And I've added realistic stop motion claymation scene filmed on Ari Alexa. And you can see the frames for this grid are going to be saved in our tortoise and the hair folder here. And if you wanted to, you can click here to create a new project folder. And let's press generate grid. And after a few seconds, you'll see it pops up here in the story grid section saying queued. And that means that the AI robots are busy making your images behind the scenes. And then you can go and put the kettle on. And then typically in around 30 seconds, it will complete. And we can now click our generation here. And it's definitely lent into that claymation style. So not stuck that closely with our image references but we have got nice consistency of the different scenes. I'm doing one more generation. This time I'm doing three by three. Let's go for 16 by nine frames and I'm going to choose the auto mode for the shot intent. And I've removed the word claymation from that text prompt. It may take more of the art style from a different reference image, but anyway, let's see what we get and press generate grid. Okay, and with that one completed, we can click that and check out the images. And these are looking much better and actually it's maintained the style of our characters much more closely to those reference images, including that environment as well, taking some design inspiration from that. I love the fact that it has used a lower camera angle, keeping us in line with smaller characters in the scene. And we can click on these, cycle through. And we've even got a finish line shot as well. Tidy. One quick tip, if you want higher resolution images, stick with the 2x2 two two grid as 3x3 three three are slightly lower res. But if there are any images you like in these, you can go ahead and press the upscale button here, which moves over to the upscaling tool on the website. And then you can choose two times, three times or four times uh, upscaling. And I'll soon be adding some additional image upscaling models and you can increase the creativity and try that out as well. So let's take this one. You see it's slightly soft. And I'm just going to upscale that image. And this typically takes 15 to 30 seconds to complete. And with that completed, we can slide this across and see the original and then the much improved version, much cleaner fur, much more definition. Great. I'm yet to add a download button on this page, but if you go to the image section, we can go back to our gallery and we have our higher resolution here, which we can then download or we can change over to a video mode. Drop that frame down as the first frame. If we want to do, we could upscale one of those other frames from the grid and use that as an end frame. Choose our preferred video model. Let's go for Kling 2.6 Pro. And I'm just going to write out hair chilling against a lamppost as people and cars move past in the background. Camera zooms in and the hair says that's a wrap. And if we want to do, we could make this a 10 second generation. I'm going to leave it on five seconds. The audio is already on, but you can turn that off if you don't want audio generated as well, which does impact the cost of the generation. And I'm going to press generate. And that adds a video generation to the queue. And we can see once again, those AI robots are busy making our video. And then once it's complete, we can roll over and we see a little preview here, which doesn't include the audio, but if we click through. That's a wrap. Fantastic. And to wrap this up, we went through and created our character references and environment reference, moved over to the story grid tool, generated a couple of grids, and then chose one of the images and upscaled it. If we wanted to, we could move into edit mode, which allows us to use Nano Pro to edit the image. And we could just do that with a text prompt or give it another image reference, or we could just click video and turn this frame into a video. But upscaling it is a nice extra step. 
and then we end up with our video clip. And one last tip on this page here in our gallery, you can adapt the size of our thumbnails. If you only want to see images, you can press a button up here. If you only want to see videos, you can press that button and press it again to reveal all of your different sorts of assets within your project folder. Okay, hopefully the StoryGrid tool can be useful for you and your AI production work. I'd love to know what you think in the comments below, either about that tool, the AI animation site, or just to say Happy New Year. Um, thanks very much for watching. Um, press subscribe and like and all that. And um, yeah, have an awesome day. Cheers.